Siku ya leo nilikizo Tulikuna taku pae mandamano ya amani Ili beya unga rudichini Halo Lakini Banaruto Banaruto Analeta askari Anapiga watu watu Anashika watu watu Anabunja katuba na sharia tutamshtaki tutamshtaki kule ICC sasa lakini leo ni kwa ni mwanzo mambo 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 tena jumatatu ijayo jumatatu ijayo Tuko ni tuko maandamano. Tazawa. Kila jima. Kila jima tatu. Unaunga mkono. Unaunga mkono. Tuko hapa. Na mama Martha Karao. Unaona Martha. Tuko bila bila. Kalozo msioka. Tuko bila bila. Junet Mohamed Tuko pali na wajakora Tuko pali na kioni Tuko pali na Fatum of all network Na wili worship Utienda mayo Saza Kathara hoi 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 Muko tari Muko tari Ungefika kutari yone mkono hapa Asande ni sana Asande ni sana Zimi wa baba Baba Teshi ya baba Baba Zimi wa baba Baba Teshi ya baba Baba Zimi wa baba Baba Teshi ya baba Baba Yeah, we continue to monitor the progress of uh, and the situation around the country, specifically here in Nairobi along Juja Road where the Azimio motorcade is currently uh, snaking its way through, coming from East Lee and prior to that, Kamkunji. Uh, and uh, at various stops, the Azimio leader will make a, a brief statement uh, stating that uh, the, the political battle is on, cost of living must come down, electoral justice is needed. Uh, and of course, you can see some of them holding those sufuria symbolic of uh, the cost of living and uh, why it must come down uh, as part of their demands to the government. And uh, some gentlemen who've been following uh, uh, the proceedings closely and the situation closely for the better part of the day are here with me in studio. I'm glad to have uh, Dr. Eric Komolo, an advocate of the High Court. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, we also have Stephen Obiro, who's the head of advocacy, consulting and partnerships at the Federation of Kenya Employers. Welcome to the program, Stephen. Thank you. And Danvas Makori, who's the commissioner at the National 
National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Danvers, welcome. Thanks, Phil. And Danvers, I'll actually start with you on this one. And uh, looking at uh, the mandate of the NCIC is to promote arbitration, conciliation, mediation, and similar forms of conflict resolution mechanisms. If you look at the pictures on the screen, there isn't much uh, in terms of re resolution going on. And maybe that's where we should begin. What did we have to get here? I guess is the question I'm sure many around the country are, are asking themselves. Uh, thanks, Vega, for having me. Um, I just put in context, it's actually hard to imagine that we had election six months ago. Um, this is something you usually see after election. Uh, this past weekend, there was a lot of discussions behind the scenes, there's a lot of dialogue behind the scenes, uh, especially from the international community. Um, beginning, I think, on Friday, actually, there was a lot of shuttle diplomacy happening behind the scenes. There was a lot of shuttle dipl yes, diplomacy was, happening. Actually, and, I'm, I'm, and if you look at uh, the Honorable regular segments during the weekend, it was oscillating between all the, the processes on and off because he wasn't, there was, nobody was really sure because there was a lot of pressure, uh, both from international community even just local actors. Uh, to try to make sure we don't go where we've seen what happened today. Uh, and I think as, as of even today morning, um, there was a sense that it wasn't going to go that way because there was some sort of agreements made. One, as it was very clear, nobody was going to march uh, towards uh, any protected um, entity or facility, that is. That was very clear. Um, but. Uh, I think from what has transpired, we've been watching this whole day, we've been monitoring uh, from a situation room. I think there was that escalation, uh, bit by bit, and I can tell you nobody from both sides saw this coming as, as what is happening right now as we speak. As what you see right now, nobody planned that, nobody saw that coming. Um, and now things are just getting alive, it's morphing into a life of its own, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's the reality. So I'm just giving you what happened behind the scenes. There's been a lot of dialogue to, to, to stave off. And actually, it was stable to an extent, I can tell you that. Um, what I'm seeing right now actually is, 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 is new. But it wasn't what was agreed upon. I, and, and I, I don't know that you'd, you'd be able to give us a sense of what you think happened because, you know, um, and I get the sense indeed that there are those who thought that nothing much would happen today. When you see some business owners in the CBD actually open up yeah. this morning, they thought it's going to be a normal day, maybe a few protests here and there, but it's, it's, it's a completely different situation right now. Um, so what happens is, especially if you're in a conflict situation, and I've been in a number of them, uh, there's always hardliners. They, they take hardline position in, in, in both sides. And, and the, the, the hardest task is to convince them uh, and dislodge them. And sometimes Thailand is the ones who dig in and you see what's happening right now. Because principles for the most part are reasonable and rational. And, and majority of their people around them are like that. And if you look at even the Azimio side, for the, for the most part, prior to today, majority of the Azimio MPs have not been for it. Uh, majority of the governors, the MPs, really have not really gone that way. Even in their rallies, you don't see many of them. As a matter of fact, most of them, you see them pledging to work with the government because they're the moderates and more reasonable. But there's always hardliners on both sides who dig in and make it really hard now because all you got to... you be situation probably that will happen whereby things are agreed upon and then last minute somebody just says something. Just one person, it takes one person to derail a whole uh, process like, like this and, and things change very quickly. Um, so that's maybe what, maybe that's what happened yesterday if, 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 if your um, the theory is, is, anything, <laughs> is anything to go by. As you, as you but, think about that, yes. I, I can bring in Stephen Obiro here who's the head of advocacy, consulting and partnerships at the Federation of Kenya Employers. It's too early to ask about the cost of today's protests. It's too early maybe to ask how many businesses did not open, what the, you know, what the cost is to the economy and so forth. But what would you be looking at as FKE to give you a sense of the impact of one day like today? Um, the first thing that uh, Maura will be looking at is uh, uh, the lost man hours. Uh, if you look at uh, an example in Nairobi, you had uh, depressed businesses, uh, the streets were almost empty, people were keeping away from uh, the normal business activity. And by and large, more than uh, Nairobi was, uh, uh, more than 50% of it was not you know, in operation. Look at the roads and the, all that. So if you look at that and you look at the man hours lost, and that is productivity lost to the economy. 
if, if you put that in monetary terms and look at, uh, even if you put it at uh, the minimum wages and look at the number of people that are employed in Nairobi, that are employed in Kisumu and all the areas that we have had this uh, uh, situation, and you look at the people who spent their time glued uh, on, on the national televisions and just trying to follow up and not being in the, in the in, um, productive, it is huge impact to the economy. Uh, the businesses, as we understand, they're just coming out of COVID situation. They haven't even recovered to the level of pre-COVID. Uh, they had a lot of uh, disruptions in their financial, uh, in their cash flows uh, and in their operations and all that. So this is going to compound the situation. And what is our appeal to the, to the leaders as the Federation of Kenya employers? Uh, can we have a way where the leaders, they have each each. Uh, each side have their position, they have their grievances. Uh, I mean, the best thing is let them work out um, if, uh, if the issues that have been raised and we are appealing to the government, we are appealing to the, uh, to the leaders of the Azimio group to come together and find an amicable solution that is a win-win to all of them and a win-win to, to the economy so that then we can be able to move uh, ahead. It's very important because what is being lost is enormous and if this uh, riots, uh, if these protests are going to be sustained, then the country, and you will see uh, when we get to the data that will, will come out perhaps after a quarter or three years, three months and all that, the, the, we are going to have uh, reversed back to, in our economic uh, performance. And we know the situation where the people are, uh, people are suffering. It is very important that they work out a solution to this situation. So I'm wondering, before Dr. Komolo comes in, what do you tell your staffers today if you're their business manager? Should they report to work tomorrow or not? What do you tell parents if you are a principal? Do they go to take their children to school tomorrow or not? Hard questions. I don't know if you have the answer, know, but you I may know, have some that, thoughts. I know they're hard <laughs> questions, but one of the things we need to uh, to be able to um, to delink to delink the police constraints and what happens at the workplace. Uh, the workplace is governed by the uh, different laws and um, policies that govern the workplace, and you are required to come and work. I mean, uh, at the end of the month or at the end of the, your payment period, you demand to be paid. <laughs> to be paid for what? There has to be work continue. Yeah, I mean, because this employer, for him or her to get what to pay, you needs to work to continue. And so you have to work out a situation uh, where you come to work and, and, and deliver. If you have your political um, uh, leanings and uh, workings, that is up to you. Uh, but then we encourage that the workers should come to work. They should be able to work. I mean, even from, I know, uh, even from the, the Azimio or the government, all of us, we don't want the, the country to come at a standstill. Uh, we, we, we don't want our, 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 stu our children. And remember this class, say, of uh, class 8 and even of form 4 that is uh, going to do the examination this year were the class that were really affected by the COVID. They were in the midst of COVID. So if this situation persists, what are we doing to the future generation? We need to create an amicable solution. Some, some really weighty things to think about. That's Stephen Obiro, Head of Advocacy, Consulting and Partnerships at the Federation of Kenya Employers. We also have Dr. Eric Komolo, an advocate of the High Court. Doc, thanks for staying with us. I think I think I actually saw you giving some thoughts earlier today on a you know same studio, different platform, so to speak, mm -hmm. about what you anticipated. Did you see this coming, Dr. Komolo? I, I don't know if you're a prophet or not, but uh, I'm definitely not a prophet. <laughs> Kenya, Kenya does not have a shortage of prophets, though. <laughs> Look, um, Wahiga, in any self-respecting democracy, there are formal and informal ways, pathways of leaders and political parties engaging. I long expected uh, the government side and the opposition side to be able to informally talk and agree on um, a program of activities for uh, the rally, the picketing. Um, I don't see why it would be so difficult to allow them to gather in one place and do their thing and communicate to their to their constituencies and then we, we have a more organized and, and, and peaceful demonstration. I'm, I am concerned uh, that uh, it seems like um, the Kenya police... I, I, I'll interrupt you briefly, just to listen over. to the Azimio leader, then we'll come back to you. <laughs> Adonini, tutaendelea, 
Mambo 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 tayari mwana Mambo tayari Jumba tatu mambo 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 tayari Mambo mambo tayari Tayari na tayari Tayari na tayari Sawa Mpaka gharama onga ruda chini Achupati haki 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 Saza Wakapu yungu mkono Tukapane Mami Mitha Kara Talanza Mshoka Yijanu wa Mala Utiende ya Mala Mwanaweza Kara Rosa Mwong Gabona Hello Gabona Gabona Wanga Mwazia Wana Ate Wana Kiyomi And in that, uh, what has now become a predictable manner, short, uh, impromptu addresses to the crowd. And then the Azimio motorcade continues snaking its way now on Juja Road, um, you know, uh, speaking to different sets of protesters and supporters along the way as they proceed. And Dr. Komolo was speaking as, as uh, just before uh, Raila began to speak there. Uh, Doc, let me bring you back in. And of course, uh, you know, uh, the latest demands, one, are to open up the IBC servers, stop the ongoing recruitment of the IBC commissioners, and ensure the cost of living comes down. This is what you are hoping and expecting there'd be engagement on in addition to any the manner of protest if they were to happen? Yes, I will expect that uh, there is informal engagement uh, so that uh, um, they create a platform to start addressing these things because they're not going to go away. The uh, issue of cost of living is not going to go away. The issue of electoral justice is not going to go away until people start having a dialogue. And certainly issue of public service appointments. These are things that have been here for some time. And it's important that we address them progressively going forward. I don't know why uh, they never, they, from what's happening clearly, they never consulted much. Why they never consulted to agree on a program of activities for today. They had said they wanted to go to KICC. You could give them alternative venue. Now, for lack of consultation, you can see now they are going to address rallies across the city, mobilize um, across different constituencies. And if you've been to the streets today, as I have been, You'll notice even here in Kilimani and Kilesho and all these areas, Gong Road, it's like 90% shut down. So I, I don't see how Kenya is going to benefit from this. I don't see how the president and people in government benefit from this uh, because a paralyzed economy uh, simply means a country cannot function. They won't be able to generate taxes and all that. 
my worry, and I'm happy that our colleague from uh, uh, the Cohesion Commission is here. You want to and address of course, him, and of course, to address and him of, directly? <laughs> I, I hope, I hope so. <laughs> and I hope our friend from FKE. Uh, my bigger worry is that perhaps because there are too many youthful uh, leaders, or particularly on the government side, and to some degree on the opposition side, they are not creating platform for talking. There are a bit of so many headliners. Uh, you know, when we were here before, before handshake and during President Kibaki, you had relatively mature people. And they were able to talk to the president at a particular point and say, okay, I, I know you have a stand. I know you believe you won the election, but we have a country to preserve. Let's talk. Uh, we have an opposition that controls half of the country, that controls including Nairobi if you are talking about county assembly and all that. And you are now talking about people who by law are controlling counties with money. You know, so, so it's not like they will beg you to be in government. They are technically already in government. So you better talk, um, have a conversation around Kenya. I, I am happy that Kenyans are protesting, but it needs to be orderly. It needs to be predictable. Now, for lack of talking, you can see Wahiga every Monday we may, be, we may have to shut down Nairobi. Yeah. Some so, would ask, if, if, if this talking is something the country must consider, should it have been then part of our constitution? Because the constitution does not envision talks after every election. The, uh, I keep on saying that the constitution was written by us. We have a country that's divided. We have a country that we all know is tribal, is ethnicized. People are mobilized along those lines. You can't integrate that in the constitution, but you can create elements of equity. That's what counties is all about. That is what uh, equalization fund and all these uh, uh, opportunities are all about. But clearly they are not enough because there's concern that <coughs> we still have a winner takes all approach. And I think that's why the victors are uh, feeling entitled that they have to rule and opposition should stay away. But in serious countries, I keep giving a, the best example for Kenya would be Germany. The opposition and the, I mean, the, the party that comes number one and two, from time to time, talk and form a government. This is Germany. What is so special about Kenya? <laughs> you know, when we, when we all know that, you know, the manifesto of Azimi and Kenya Kwanza is not that different. These are people who work together. I mean, Wetangula is a gentleman. He worked with Mr. Dinga until one, two years ago. So is Mr. Mudabodi. I know he's a mature guy. And several other people that are in the government. We were with Nelson Koech here in the morning. We were privately talking, a gentleman. I don't understand why when they go for press conferences, <laughs> they become too extreme. Let people talk. We have a country. Most of us th survive by going to court and, you know, getting clients and earning something, and we pay taxes. We will not be able to pay taxes if they close everything, nobody's going to court, uh, commercial disputes, not there, and things like that. And I, I'm, I'm sure the people in government don't want to see Waiga broke and Eric Kovolo broke. Some, <laughs> something you said has pricked, okay, I don't know who wants to come in, Steve or Danvers, you, both of you look like you want to jump in and then respond. I, I, I think, Dr. Kovolo, I... I First of all, he, he alluded that because we are young, young leaders in government, we are the hardliners. If anything, we are the ones who... <laughs> are, no, 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 I need to clarify. I was yeah. talking about political, political leaders, leaders, not, 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 not commissioners. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> but but um, in, let me just respond by saying this, uh, Wahiga. Um, the Right Honorable fight fought for this constitution that we have right now, okay? And this constitution has provided a way of election and governance, so to speak. Uh, it is unfair for if you've agreed to the rules of the game, then demand them to, to change when the rules don't favor you, so to speak. Understand? Let, let's face it. Let's, you know, when in negotiations, we do a lot of dialogue and facilitation and mediate, Wahiga. When you do, there has to be a basis uh, or a point of departure when you're negotiating. What, what, what is the fundamental? Fundamental is this is a legitimately elected government. Okay, and, and, and there was debate about it, but the Supreme Court, which the Constitution has, has given as a way to uh, the final of what he said, it, it, there was nothing wrong. So we, 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 that is fact. We cannot debate around that. So you, nobody, you, nobody has a right to say this is a legitimate government. That is not a, a fair, factual statement. So we have to agree to a point of 
dialogue. Dialogue is important and, 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 and there, there will be dialogue, but certain fundamental truths have to be said to Wahiga. So it's really unfair to put pressure on, on government that was legitimately elected uh, because you lost, so to speak. And if you really think it's unfair, the, the, the arbitra, which the Supreme Court said, no, it wasn't really a fair election. So that's a, that's a fundamental we need to agree. Now, as to, as to, as to the, the grievances, I agree with you. Um, and there, there has been back channels, I can tell you. Okay, there, there, there has been, but but the, but whatever is sometimes is agreed that doesn't come come to fruition. Now, up to now, Wahiga. Uh, okay. Yeah. B before that, what we can see in be you know behind the Azimio motorcade is uh, water cannon, uh, police water cannon, uh, water tear gas, and also water as well being sprayed in all directions just behind that motorcade. Uh, and so you know every time the motorcade stops, you know they disperse, you know the protesters around the motorcade. And then those, you know, the team then quickly drives off as well. So this, and and you can also see protesters throwing stones, I believe, at the police as well. Uh, and so let's let's just listen a little bit. Then Danvers, I'll come back to you. We continue allowing you just to get a feel of, of what's happening, uh, sights uh, and sounds, so to speak, around this motorcade uh, behind the uh, police water cannon trailing them, uh, dispersing those within length with tear gas or within reach with tear gas and uh, uh, water spray as well. Um, uh, uh, and, and of course, in front there, you know, we can definitely see the Azimu leaders still leading this team. Every once in a while, you see pictures like what you're seeing on your screen where the protesters are dispersed. That's tear gas once again. Uh, some stones also thrown by the protesters towards the police. Um, this now being a very familiar sight on a day of protests like this one. Uh, and of course, the question of could the talks have stalled this, have ensured that this doesn't happen, that's actually the kind of discussion we've been having here in studio today. Uh, and uh, Danvas Makori, who's a commissioner with the NCS, he was actually speaking just before uh, we took our, our viewers to those live pictures there. And I can allow you to make your point, uh, Danvas. Yeah, so that's what I was saying, uh, Wega, thank you. you. You, following what we have as a country in the Constitution, you cannot challenge the legitimacy of the government, because that was one of the issues they had. Now, of course, it's morphing into issues of, of, of inflation and so on and so forth, which is understandable. But the question I'm going to ask is, so we've shut down the Nairobi today and parts of Kisumu. Uh, I can estimate um, from last 2017 and um, mayhem we had. Right now, if you do um, an extraction, a lead extrapolation, we had a 2.7 billion probably today lost. I, I can put it that way. And, 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 and my friend from Mekivi actually will confirm this when the data comes in. So I, uh, my question is, how, how, how do you expect this to change our cost of living, make life better for, for Nairobians? You understand? So even if, even if there was a legitimate, uh, which there is for Nairobians, there's a better way of addressing it. Till now, Wahiga, now that the, the, the convoy is sneaking through the eastlands part of our, country, uh, of, of our city, for the most part in the morning, we'll be running battles in, in, um, in, in, uh, in Nairobi. We monitor... Uh, by a month, we monitor about 16 stations in this country, international uh, stations. If you, if, I, if you look at all the stations, because we, we were monitoring everything, including international stations, BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN, I can tell you the images are not very good. So it, it's not helping our economy and our investors. So there has to be a, a better way that, than doing this, what, what, and this is not sustainable at, at all. 
Uh, Stephen, jumping in, we um, for the longest time Kenya has been known as the the hub of business, the leading light in the region. Um, but there has been discussions over the last couple of years of whether other East African or regional countries are getting their acts together, beginning to position themselves in a particular way uh, to take that sort of title from Kenya, from Nairobi as well. When you see pictures like this, do you get any concerns that <laughs> the, the, the best place to do business in the region, so to speak, is a title that we have to fight for as a country? Uh, definitely we get uh, concerned because we need a conducive business environment uh, for us to continue doing the, the business. Um, but every country uh, faces challenges once in a while uh, and these are some of those challenges that we have to pass through and uh, reach certain uh, uh, milestones. Um, I want us to, uh, and the political class, if they can borrow, uh, leave from the labor sector. Uh, I Hello? Hello? How are you? Oh, God. Oh, God. Tumekuja kutoshu kwenu kwenu. Asa ndani sana. Ndani sana ndani sana kwa kusimama imara. Aduwafanya nini? Aduwafanya nini? Toto kamba. Toto shinda. Juma tatu ijao. Juma tatu ijao. Toto hudi tena. Asante. Asante ni sana. Kwa kusimama imara. Hata kama hali wa hapa wanajaribu kwa nini? Tony Pan na Tuzi kwa polisi. Ati leo Jumatatu tarehe 20. Eh? Waoga. Waoga. Sisi wa baba Ya baba baba sini wa baba 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 sini wa baba baba ya baba 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 sini wa baba baba well, in now in what is becoming a very uh, familiar pattern, those armored water cannon trucks with high pressure water jet systems really just spraying into this Azimio motorcade. And you're seeing that image from the windshield of, our, of uh, the uh, uh, vehicle that our journalists are in, uh, just trying to shelter at the moment and still bring you the images that you are seeing. Uh, prior to this, Azimio leader Raila Odinga was addressing those present. He had barely spoken for a minute or two before this uh, armored water cannon truck 
uh, was quote unquote let loose on uh, protesters uh, spraying those uh, high pressure water jet streams into the crowd. But uh, the protesters now trying to repulse the armored truck with uh, stones and anything else they can get their hands on. Uh, and uh, a bit of a conflict between the two and uh, a battle, yes, and you, you can definitely see the protesters there. Uh, hurling uh, all sorts of items towards the, uh, especially uh, stones, I believe, from what I can see, uh, towards uh, those armored water cannon trucks. We've also seen the riot police there lobbing tear gas into the crowd. So it's a mixture of tear gas, uh, armored water trucks, uh, water cannon trucks as well, also spraying. And this is more of what you are seeing on your screen. This is along Juja Road. Uh, and uh, I guess one of the key challenges is that even business people there whose shops are just adjacent to this road are having to deal with the impact of uh, the anti-riot uh, you know, activities at this very moment. Uh, a protester there trying to uh, you know, wash themselves off this uh, uh, water and... Uh, and it, 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 it's really a, a volatile situation at the moment here along Juja Road, where there's this impasse now between uh, the Azimio motorcade, the protesters on one end, and the police with at least two armored water cannon trucks. I've seen a police truck as well, and, uh, and, and others. Let's listen in. <laughs>
Chiwe na kuja kama bomba. Well, what we're being informed by our teams on the ground is uh, the pictures that you're seeing is of uh, a s impasse of sorts where the uh, water armored water cannon trucks are towards the front and the back of this convoy. And so there's no movement or there's very little or limited movement. Uh, uh, and protesters are trying to then, you know, find a way forward for the convoy by throwing stones. Um, so the Azimio motorcade here, the journalists from both local and international media also in the midst of all this as well, the protesters, uh, we are told uh, tear gas still raining around Moisley Air Base, Huruma. These are pictures along Juja Road as well. Uh, Karyobangi from both sides is impassable at the moment. And that's why you're seeing very little movement here. People running back and forth, back and forth as they try to make their way forward. And we'll be talking to our Chemutai Goin, uh, who's informing us that they are caught in between, the convoy is in between uh, with the armored water cannon trucks, both at the front, one, one or two at the front, one or two at the back as well. And that's why there's very little movement at the moment here. Uh, tear gas, uh, we had seen that earlier. Uh, the high pressure water jet systems of these armored trucks also really spraying the protesters in equal measure. Uh, and uh, of course, the protesters responding with these stones, and you can see some of those uh, now on the ground as well. Uh, and so we'll be speaking to our teams on the ground shortly just to get a sense of uh, what is going on. But um, just before we came to this, uh, uh, Danvers was talking to us a little bit about the difference between protests here and protests uh, in other parts of uh, uh, the continent. We know there were supposed to be protests in three other countries as well, but pretty much what we've seen online is a lot happening in South Africa. And there's a different standards from what you, you were stating. Actually, like I said, we monitor all these stations. Even as I'm looking, I was looking before, uh, if you look at international stations right now, by far the Kenyan uh, protest has been covered overwhelmingly by BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN Online, um, the Chavela, uh, the television, uh, I think it's called kind of France, the National, and, I mean, and you name and, it, and, 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 and you figure Kenya. out that we had we had four countries having protests today, and thirty percent of that, uh, actually, so so seventy percent of the headlines coming from international media, actually is on our Kenyan protests right now, and we have huge protests in South Africa right now because I'm just getting some feeds from there, but nobody the international media is not covering that. So sh uh, first of all, it shows you the, our strategic. Uh, place uh, geopolitical spaces as a country, but I'll show you the stakes. Why the international community was very keen in brokering some sort of dialogue and then de-escalating because you we can this has to be de-escalated one way or another, and that is why throughout the weekend there was a lot of back and forth, especially from the international community, to, to make sure this doesn't go the way it is, and now the whole world is is, is watching. So figure out Nigeria is bigger than our, our country, South Africa way bigger economically, but of interest, global interest will always be global interest. Yeah, just just to note you that. I have a question. Colleague, okay, a former colleague who knocks for an international media house, and they say they are covering both in equal measure. They dispute what you're saying, Danvers, <laughs> but we'll come back and talk about that. I, th I think we can bring in Chemutai, uh, go in. Uh, Chemutai, um, I believe you're on Juja Road. What's the, where are you exactly? What's the latest? But we are somewhere along Juja Road. Um, the cars, of course, uh, part of the convoy and the uh, there's, there's been a bit of spraying, not a bit, let me say a lot of spraying by the police canyons, the water canyons. And uh, what a police managed to do is have, I think it should be one or two at the back, not being able to see because, of course, there were also stones being planted. And it was actually at the crowd that was here trying to, you know, chase away the, the police officers, who are actually very many, um, all, all of them with... Um, with tear, canis, with tear, uh, tear canises, and at the front there was also a water canyon. So at some point when you got to a closed road where you either go front or front, um, they let the water out and uh, sort of managed to disperse the crowd. But now the stones were planted. You saw that picture of pieces of uh, like pieces of stone. Those are stones that were being broken apart and which have been thrown. I think in a above a, 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 a vehicle we should be carrying a, a number a, a number of stones because uh, we felt a lot of that. 
hitting the vehicle, but generally it's just the supporters trying to chase away the police officers who are trailing the entire convoy. And we are not certain whether this will mark the, whether we are heading to a particular ground for an address or uh, we are actually finding a route back to town. So we're following the convoy and um, uh, the new leaders have not managed to make their speeches. It looks like maybe at this point there may be some speeches because uh, there is sort of some level of order and the crowds have gathered at the front and we are just right ahead of them. We can see uh, we can see the principal, uh, Raila Odinga. We can see the Kenya leader, Masa Karua. The wiper leader, Kalonzo Mustoka. The ODM Secretary General in Nairobi, Senator uh, Edwin Sepuna. Uh, we can see Narok Senator Ledama Ole... Ledama Olekin. Olekina, beg your pardon. Uh, there is also Mumia, this member of parliament, Peter Salashia. We're seeing the ODM Nairobi chairman and Makadara member of parliament here. We've also seen Mbakasi, this member of parliament, Babu Owino present. So, uh, and also, um, Homer Bay governor is among the governors that have joined um, uh, this protest. Homer Bay governor, Gladys Wanga. Uh, and, uh, and a host of uh, other leaders who um, occasionally we get to see them, but um, it appears that this journey to to wherever the last meeting will happen or rather the highlights of the mass demonstrations will happen is still on. And uh, uh, the, uh, the new leader is raring to go. He, he appears uh, uh, to just say, you know, uh, he must be hard. So uh, we will look out for what will happen. We will keep updating you on our various platforms on what is happening uh, uh, along the way, uh, but no, no major incidents regarding whether there have been injuries or you know or any any case of, of that nature. All we know is uh, it's just uh, tear gas. Uh, the, 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 the police have lobbed tear gas, and um, that is all that has actually gone over happened to Hawaii. Temutai going as as always. Uh, we ask you to endeavour to stay safe with the crew there, even as you continue. Uh, to give us more updates and uh, truly we'll just have to wait and see. Um, hoping we'll get a sense now of what the final intention of uh, and final destination of uh, this convoy is. Uh, but uh, at the moment it still remains a wait and see situation and uh, we'll go back to Chemutai going and, and our other teams uh, across uh, the city as and when there are any updates. But of course here we remain with my guests in studio. We still have Dr. Eric Komol, an advocate of the High Court Danvas Makori, who's a commissioner with the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, and Stephen Obiro, who's the head of advocacy, consulting, and partnerships at FKE. And uh, uh, Stephen, I think the last time we spoke, we spoke a, a bit about Kenya's placing in the region, uh, a, a, a stable place to do business, a stable business environment, a place to invest as well, uh, but one which is on the radar of, of several other countries in the region who are also really making gains in terms of ease of doing business and everything else. And I had asked you earlier, what does a day like today mean for our, our global ratings? And are there, and I've seen comments by journalists in other countries who marvel at Kenya's democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of association, and so forth, but then wonder if there's a downside to it, that uh, it could have, you know, it's harder than, to, you know, to do business in an environment like this, uh, amongst others. And just to back something you said, where protests happen around the world, there are protests in Paris yesterday, if not today as well. I haven't seen uh, what the reactions are to that. There are protests in South Africa. Will there only be reactions when there are protests in African nations. Let's talk a bit about that. Uh, Ian, um, the, the protests... Uh, okay, you don't know if you can hear me, Stephen. Okay, let me give you a chance now to speak. Go ahead. Uh, the protests that are, uh, are happening, uh, what I can say, they're not only unique to Kenya. Uh, what we need to do is uh, to have a situation where the involved parties that are able to have a dialogue and have a good way of managing uh, whichever protest is and also addressing the, the issues. In the labor sector, uh, I, and you know there is a lot of strikes, a number of strikes that happens in the labor sector, but there is an experience that we have in social dialogue that even when we disagree, we can dialogue on how we are going to agree. We may not agree on the issues like uh, the three issues that have been uh, put on the table, perhaps the, 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 His Excellency the President and the, uh, the Right Honourable former Prime Minister might not agree, 
but they can agree on how they are going to address those issues. That is going to be a win for, for both of them and a win for the country. What the business community is, uh, is keen on is to see a business environment that facilitates the business. What we are seeing as the cost of living, what we are seeing as the, the situation of many of, of high unemployment is because we don't have business that are growing in the country. Many of the business that start as small businesses, uh, some of them start in the informal sector, some of them are micro businesses. Uh, they have a lifespan of three years, three to five years, most of them have died. So what happens in that scenario? Then we don't create employment. So we have so many youths uh, who are outside there uh, and uh, they, they don't, they're not being engaged uh, meaningfully. And we remember in 2016, we held the employer summit and it was attended by the former uh, president, uh, His Excellency President Uhuru. And we raised this issue. Our executive director, Madam Jacqueline Mugo, said, wait a minute, we are facing a crisis. If we don't start, if we don't create an environment that we attract investment, we, we, we expand our businesses, we are able to create employment, then we are going to reach a situation where uh, the population, we are going to have a high number of youths uh, educated and uh, energetic, uh, very uh, energetic, but they, they don't have something to do. Are the young people are seeing on our screen a, a percentage of those? This is the manifestation of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to look at the core issues that are affecting our economy. How are we growing our economy? How are we growing our businesses? How are we supporting the businesses to create employment, to expand? We need businesses that start in Kenya to also become multinationals and create a lot of employment for people. We have now, in if you look at Africa and regional level, we are discussing the African continent free trade area mm -hmm. agreement which is saying Africa can trade with Africa we need to be thinking of how are we going to take uh, to produce commodities at competitive uh, prices uh, to be able to compete in this in this uh, uh, market that is being opened up if we do that then we are going to address what we, we, we are seeing, the challenges that we are facing today. And the, the, the issues, the grievances that are, are being pushed, the leaders have the capacity to solve them. The right honorable, uh, uh, former, uh, the right honorable uh, former prime minister and his excellence, the president, have the capacity to address these issues. Do they have the courage to say it is our moment it is us, the, 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 the bat stops and starts with us. Can we sit down, look each other in the face and say, uh, what is the context? And what is your context? Understand each other. Because all of them have a context they are coming from, the thinking they are coming from. If they are able to sit down and have a one and one uh, dialogue, they have the capacity to address these issues. They have the capacity, even today, to put a stop to what uh, we are seeing. They have the capacity to address all the issues that have been raised. The question is, do they have the courage? And the business community is saying, uh, we have an obligation mm. to leave for the future generation a better Kenya in all spheres, whether it is political development, social development, economic development. We have an obligation. And at any moment, we who have the positions of authority, at any moment, we all have the opportunity to make a contribution. We need to rise to the occasion mm -hmm. and face the challenges that are there and come up with a win-win solution that 100 years from now, when our great-grandchildren will be seated and they're having their nice time, they will be proud that we existed and we had those opportunities. And to us, that's the challenge we are giving them. Uh, let's solve the issues. Uh, let's agree. The, uh, let them agree on how they are going to solve them, even if they don't have the solutions. Mm. And let the streets uh, be safe and let the businesses operate. Uh, and uh, Maura, today there are people who are going to sleep hungry because their businesses could not operate. Uh, today we have many workers who perhaps um, they depend on day-to-day -day, um, wages. They're not going to, to, have, to have that because perhaps the, the whatever, wherever they work was closed. And these are things that lead us, they need to be live to. Very real so that then, realities. Mm -hmm. So that then we can be able to move as an economy. What we are seeing is a manifestation of the challenges that we have of lack of employment, quality employment, that we just need to have the businesses. And we'll dig deeper into that, Dr. Komolo. I'm sure you want to come in. He's spoken about courage. Do our leaders have the courage to, to rise up and address, you know, 
uh, some of the challenges seen today and, and are they going to be willing to do it? There's been a discussion around the system of governance that we have adopted within our 2010 constitution and so forth. Some have called for African nations to look at, you know, homegrown solutions to problems. I think I recently had the chance to, to go to Rwanda and one of the messages that came out is that Africa must begin to invent for itself solutions that work from a local context and not just pick everything that comes from the West. But some say you can have all manner of governance systems. If the people are not ready to implement them or to abide by them, then, you know, you cannot legislate yourself to prosperity or to wealth and so forth. Where do you sit on that as a legal mind? Uh, um, I don't think the issue is really poor governance structures we have in Kenya or Africa. I think this is entirely a question of bad manners in politics, <laughs> uh, that our leaders are unable to foresee a situation like this and handle it mature, maturely. Um, you are talking all here about investments and Kenya being the hub and all that. The truth is, Kenya attracts a lot of investments, foreign direct investment, but mostly in services and construction. Uh, construction mostly in Nairobi. Uh, uh, which, which uh, these guys can leave any time. That's just a fact. Eh? And manufacturing is dead. Um, the reason why I'm talking about services, particularly technology, banking, um, and other related services, because these are the, also the investments that can easily be relocated. And it's good you came from Rwanda. You can see how Kigali is competing uh, Kenya, particularly in terms of uh, international conference or conference tourism. Um, as we speak, there are so many people I know who work in the tourism industry who are already getting cancellations. So, you know, uh, a typical white visitor here will all, we'll only have to look at the news and uh, reschedule their, their visits. So, bad manners in politics is leading to all these challenges and eventually uh, uh, making Kenyan rating go low. And this is something that can be resolved very fast. I think that uh, there's no reason why the president and Mr. Dinger cannot meet and have structured dialogue around things that have been highlighted. Some are quick wins. Stop the IBC recruitment, make it more participatory. Uh, cost of living issues, engage on subsidies that are practical. Make it more participatory. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? You, you, what exactly would you like to see within the law? It, it, to me, it's very clear that uh, Azimio need to nominate some of the commissioners in Kenya Kwanza, nominate some of the commissioners, and then they agree on a package of reforms, uh, particularly integration of IT, uh, particularly on how you know you, you, you reform uh, working of IBC along the lines that the Supreme Court suggested, uh, and build confidence um, in our systems that they can work and they can be sustained to work. Before, before uh, I, I forget... I and, think, oh, and before I forget, yes. this is a process of recruitment of commissioners that is already ongoing, Yes. guided by the law. Yes. You try and change that path, now someone moves to court, questions why? Don't, don't, and you shooting you, you yourself know, in the foot? All these dictatorships in the world also have laws. All these countries that you see dictators uh, emerging and ruling for 20, 30 years, they have laws. Law can be abused. I, I, we lawyers who draft laws, we know we act based on instructions of our clients. And you know sometimes laws are inconsistent with the ideals of society. So don't use the IBC. And are uh, you then proposing for an abuse of the law? Yourself? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, your I'm proposing for an engagement, a structured engagement, on how this law can work for us better, particularly on IBC. It has to work for us. The law, it's not the other way around. We don't serve the law. The law serves us. So it's very important that we look at We also don't serve the police. They serve us. And all this uh, 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 equipment they have, all this water, whatever they have, remember it's our taxes. So the police also needs to, need to be professional. They don't have to chase everyone across the city the whole day pretending to be maintaining law and order when it is very clear that they're not they're facilitating a, 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 a further protest in a city that is 60 percent or so informal informal settlements how will you be able to control crowds in Kibra? they know that the, the roots more than you so it's better police also become professional handle crowds in a professional manner agree with the protest i know several people in azimio who are very reasonable people or tindia molo and that group you agree with these people in advance Take them to Jacaranda. Let them have address their supporters for two, three hours plus, and then we move on to other things. And let, um, in the Kenya Kwanzaa side, I specific, specifically think that Mr. Wetangula is reasonable. I think Mr. Muravad is reasonable. I think there are also senior members of parliament there and senators who can talk to the president and tell him, okay, you may have warned, but how are you going to govern? Can you just talk? 
Mr. Uru talked, Mr. Uru Kenyatta talked, Mr. Uh, Kibaki talked. Why is Kenya Kwanzaa so special? They don't want to talk and we are having a, a country that is not functioning. For the whole day, this is a Monday, <laughs> the whole day people are glued on TV just, you know, trying to, I don't know how to put it politely. And speaking of glued to the TV, I think Honorable Raila Odinga is addressing those, okay, no, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, a bit once we have that sound properly. Danvers, you've been trying to say something. <laughs> Can I give you a chance to... Yeah, just a quick one uh, before. You, you see, um, the legitimate concerns raised um, by Zimio in terms of cost of living, that I can address. Uh, I'll use this analogy. I don't know what car you drive, Wahiga, but when you bang a Yui, as Americans will say, the time it takes to you for you bang a Yui in your car is very different than the time it takes to... Uh, for a fuel tanker, super tanker to turn around. I'll compare our country to a super tanker. We have challenges, we have issues. Everybody agrees. And I think it's only, we need to give this uh, administration time for them to turn around things, okay? Um, because if you don't do that, um, you will not have a year or two later have the right to criticize me because the time you're trying to turn around, now they're trying to respond to you. Now, if this was three years later, and things are, inflation is still high, um, the economy is, 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 is going in a, in, a, in a downturn, then you can say, you know what, yeah, we can protest. Because there are three years to fix the economy. But they just, they, they are barely even forming the government, so to speak. Um, so for me, on, on that context, on that specific issue, it's, a, it's an issue of just giving enough time uh, for, for them to do that. So, now, so for you, you don't have an issue with the demands, just the timing? No, no, some of them, see, see, I mean, I've been in situations I, where you mediate parties, okay? And whether you like it or not, because this is what we do, some of the demands are just can, are, are not, I, I don't want to say outrageous, but they're just not practical to, to fulfill, okay? Some are, some are not. So when you bring parties together, you have to agree, okay, where do we start? Let's start with the easier ones first. Okay, because there's certain things which are, for lack of a better word, non-negotiable. You, I mean, they just can't happen. Okay, and, and people demand certain things so that they can get certain things. And that is just how mediation and conflict is done. Okay, so you have to uh, differentiate what I know certain things they are, they are demanding. It's not going to happen, and it's just the reality. But certain things which they, they are raising, which will happen and should happen, and that you, you give that room. So just being realistic, Ohiga, there's certain things which are not going to happen. Yeah, so there's certain things which will happen. So you start with what is within the realm of possibilities, which is that addressing what affects every single Kenyan in this country, the high cost of living. And the question which we'll ask ourselves is the government doing what, is, has it started uh, the U-turn? Uh, have they started? The question is not whether we are 100% we are turned around, is have they started? And if they have started, just give them time. Now, if they haven't started, then you can criticize. But the issue is, have they started? And, and, and now economists can argue back and forth on that issue. But I think it's only fair to give people who uh, just time to, to see whether they can actually deliver what they have promised. One of the key concerns, and I saw you responding, is, is on the question of this... Uh, the, the process of getting new IBC commissioners. And uh, for uh, uh, Dr. Komolo here, he felt, stop the recruitment. Let's go back to the drawing board, involve all political players. Uh, let's have a, an, a, a, an IBC commission to be that is inclusive. You, the question of the law, however, comes into play. How do you start a process that's already ongoing as per the law? You know, you cannot have your cake and eat it too, Aigar. Either we are with a country of rule of law or we're not. So there's two parts. This, I know what the point he's trying to say. But the question is, I'm going to ask my, my good friend, Wakili, is the current process legal as far as our laws are concerned? Have they followed both the spirit and letter of the law? Have they followed the law, the constitution, as it's supposed to be? And if they have, you, I mean, that's just how it, it is. Now, you can, we can argue you can change the law, but changing the process and, and, and ignoring the law, then we become lawless. The very thing that we are trying to avoid. O Oega, <laughs> this country has reconstituted IBC severally. Uh, IBC commissioners enjoy security of office tenure, but we have removed them on several occasions. We have also used the law just the other day to remove the Chararafo. So don't use the law to justify political inactivity. You are abusing. I'm a lawyer. I've practiced law for many years. I know law is supposed to serve us. <laughs> what is the purpose of that law if the country is demonstrating every day? What, what purpose does it serve this country if, if we can't get basic things, uh, cost of living and things like that? Will you say, okay, Kenya has a constitution so people don't talk? 
you know <laughs> this <laughs> i don't know how to put it let's not have an exclusive discussion let's appreciate that we are in a context a polarized country and that country needs a dialogue that dialogue must be facilitated and the commissioner here said they were already uh, doing some shuttle diplomacy over the weekend does the law anticipate shuttle diplomacy but they were still having them that means they appreciate the context that it's very important that we mediate we have the political forces talk and if, and they talk in the interest of the country and so important so important that political activity be sustained along those topics. So I see this protest 100% as a call for dialogue. They're basically trying to raise their hand. We, you need to be heard. So it's, it's Kenya Costa's uh, side decision to choose to want to hear them or they paralyze the economy. And you can tell, today is not a public holiday. <laughs> public holiday has to be declared and gazetted. But people are not working. So will you say the law was not followed? To the Le, as, we, as we think about the law and whether it was followed or not, let's listen in. Ati baba ni alishinda. Amaputa kazi. Sazawa. Tumesema charera. Na wenzake must come back. Sazawa. Tano. Na miso. Tumesema pungua sava. Pungua sava. Pungua sava. Ukwene julikane. Hello, hello, Sasa, what are you talking about? Can you hear me? Salimu, ah, Ruaraka Fala, Ruaraka Fala. Okay, okay, okay. Waki lepa joko joko tuko na joko! Karibu kuwa viongozi Lakini na washukuru kwa zwa mnyinyi mutalinda katiba yetu Wangapu atari kulinda katiba yetu yu 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 Asanteni Karibu watuumize lakini mungu ni muema Thank you Bwana wajakora
Thank you. And we continue to bring you live images uh, on this day of protest from Isili within Nairobi County and from Madare within Nairobi County. The convoy now in Madare having left uh, Isili, uh, where our Faisal Ahmed is on standby uh, to tell us more. Faisal, what's the latest? We know most of the convoy now should be through having left Isili into Madare. Uh, but can you just quickly recap what's been happening in, Madare, in Isili, Faisal? Uh, thank you very much, Wahiga. As you've said, most of the convoy has already made its way towards Madare, where the main party leaders for Azimio are. But here in Isli, police have actually managed to cut off some of their supporters and protesters who are headed towards that direction at the uh, Juja Road intersection that's between the Isli Main Street and Juja Road. And that's where you can see a lot of the protesters lining up and burning tires, and police officers are on the other side of the road um, uh, throwing water at them using the water cannons and also tear gas. Most of the shops around this place, which would ordinarily be open at around this time, are still closed, or rather did close after the Azimio convoy passed through Isli. And those are just um, some of the shots from the police officers, as you can hear, uh, that uh, they are firing tear, uh, tear gas canisters at the protesters who are here. They have managed to cut off a good number of the protesters who are headed towards Madare together with the first convoy that has already made its way there. Uh, Juja Road, which is the link between Isli and uh, uh, Madare, that is, is actually a no-go zone. Um, we have seen multiple tires burnt along the road and police officers have actually cordoned off that section of the road using the water cannons and no vehicles, motorcycles or people are allowed to go past that barrier or barricade that has been set up by police officers. Now, residents who live here are actually just spectating some of them on top of balconies looking at what's going on here as most of the supporters are cut off at the Juja Road intersection, Wahiga. All right, Faisal, um, thank you so much for that. Um, it just painted for us a picture of, of what's been happening over the last 30 minutes or so. He tells us that at the moment, Juja Road linking, of course, Isili and Madare, a no-go zone. Uh, and you can see a lot of the activity still on the roads there. Uh, the convoy now in Madare moving very slowly along. Uh, earlier on, we had been told that uh, some of those armored water cannon trucks had trapped the convoy. There was sort of one at the front, one towards the back, and uh, the convoy, those in the convoy could not move forward or move backwards. Uh, that was a bit of a precarious situation. But right now, there has been movement. The convoy has left Isili, but, you know, of course, the impact of, of what happened there is still very clear. You can see residents of Isili still on the roads, uh, still trying to make sense of everything there even as uh, residents of Madare, now uh, the ones witnessing the movement of the convoy through those roads there, uh, with the final destination still remaining unclear. Of course, in terms of what's been happening or any casual casualties, anyone injured or so forth, we'll have any updates a bit later on. But we do know that there was running battles even here between police and protesters. The police are hurling tear gas into the crowds and uh, those uh, armored water cannon trucks spraying high pressure uh, water jet systems into the crowds. Um, and we did see the protesters responding with uh, crude weapons and stones, mainly stones uh, is at least what we've seen, throwing them to the police uh, to clear the way so that the, the motorcade can continue moving. Um, the, uh, as the new leaders there, from time to time, will issue small, short, impromptu statements uh, to those present, announcing who they are with in terms of leaders there, and then stating that uh, this march is unstoppable. It will happen every Monday until the cost of living comes down, until electoral justice concerns uh, are addressed. Uh, those are some of the demands that have been uh, made, uh, even as we continue to listen in and to follow what's been happening. And uh, Dr. Komono, something interesting before I allow Stephen Obiro to come in. Section 5 of the Public Order Act stipulates uh, some of the nitty gritties around public meetings and processions. Um, those must be held in accordance with provisions of this section. That involves notifying the regulating officer 
at least three days, but no more than 14 days before the proposed date of a meeting. And the proposed date of the meeting or procession and the time shall be between 6 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the afternoon. We are now seven minutes past uh, 5 p.m. And so there's another uh, 53 minutes left of this uh, procession if the Public Order Act is to be followed. Well, well, there are several laws in this country I don't want to talk about. <laughs> Uh, we passed the constitution in 2010 mm -hmm. that expanded significantly civil liberties. We have so many laws from 1950s okay. that the colonizers used to frustrate Mau Mau and subsequent regimes have used to stifle dissent, including growth of opposition parties. Don't you have concerns about a protest going beyond 6 p.m. from a, a logical perspective, if, if we had a whether historical or not? If we had a professional police service, whatever is happening now should not have happened. They should have long consulted with the, the leadership of Azimio, agreed on the venue, agreed on the chain of event, and provided with security. Part of the police job is to provide security, not to attack demonstrators, particularly if you're using their money. Because it's used, they're using our taxes to attack us. And then you expect somebody who has not worked the whole day to go home at six because there's some colonial law here in Kenya. So these are some of the conversations we should be having as part of the reform package that both Azimia and Kenya need to talk about, which are these colonial laws that we need to do away with because they're not practical. Look, there are so many people who meet here in Kenya, including, by the way, in social joints, well past midnight, but the law has been, has been existing all along. <laughs> so there's no point of emphasizing this. And before I forget, um, I'm concerned particularly by the institution of the church in Kenya. They are the ones who should have, at the very least, mediated this process. It, of course, including trade union and, and the commissions like NCIC. The problem here is that they have been so partisan that nobody trusts them. So in the process, you, you can't have somebody like the head of Anglican Church pretending to mediate between Kenya Konza and, and Azimio because the institution of the church that we are used to, that helped us to, have, to become a multi-party democracy, is long but gone. That is why I am pleading to, I'm pleading with sober minds in Kenya Kwanza. And I specifically look, uh, talked to Mr. Mudavadi. Sober minds in Azimio, and I know quite a number of them. Please talk to your principals and let these guys come together and talk. I know these rallies won't end until we have a structured dialogue that is leading to at least minimum reforms. And the mere fact that Azimio can sustain it and they can sustain these rallies across the country is good enough reason for the government to fear. When you spoke about the church, Danvers Makori sat up. He has, a, he has some biblical theology uh, background. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh. I, I didn't know he's a pastor. <laughs> but I know he's a good And you also address trade unions, so I want to hear from both of them. I don't know who will go first. He will go first and I'll follow. Okay, go ahead, Banobiro. Let me go first. And um, first, let me start by stating that the Federation of Kenya Employers for the 64 uh, years we have been in existence, mm. we have remained apolitical. If you are here, uh, the events leading to the elections last year, you can't say FKE never took sides, political sides. We stood with the issues. And so we, want, we know that in any dialogue to happen, even what we're saying, there should be no, uh, whoever that mediates, you should not take political sides. And you can see the conversation, there is political sides. But what are the issues? So we should focus on the issues. Um, what are the issues that are being advanced? Uh, the issues that need to be addressed? And what uh, environment can we create for them to be, to be addressed? That is very important, other than uh, trying to look at um, the personalities or making them personalize. And this is what uh, I want to say. Um, we have a challenge in the country. And uh, we should not behave like uh, the proverbial uh, ostrich uh, digging our head in the sand and assuming that there is no challenge. We have a challenge, uh, a challenge that uh, both sides need to be alive to. Uh, there are issues that have been raised uh, uh, from both sides. All the sides have issues. There are sides that say uh, we cannot have a dialogue for their, they have their reasons. There are issues that, that, that the sides that say they can have, they, we need to have a dialogue. They have raised their, their, their um, um, reasons. But in the labor sector, what we know is that you don't personalize issues. Uh, we can have a strike. And on one hand, the Secretary General is striking, 
and highlight the issues. And after that, we'll sit with the MD and are chatting, and are, uh, uh, or even with the, the trade union and, um, and, the, and, and the employers representative. Because we understand that if we, uh, don't, uh, if we don't create that environment where we can continue to engage, we cannot get uh, a solution. And this is what we are appealing to our, our leaders. We are appealing to the government. We are appealing to, to, the, uh, to the leader of, uh, of Azimio. They need to have the courage, and I still maintain a courage, mm. because they need to have the will and the courage to face the issues and acknowledge we have challenges and work out they may not have the solutions to the issues. They may not have today a solution to the cost of living, a high cost of living. We may not have uh, today a solution to the uh, IBC, um, IBC uh, nom nomination of uh, appointment of the commissioners. They may not have a solution even to the opening of the server. That solution might not be there. But there is one solution they have. They have they have a solution of where they can agree on a framework on how these issues are going to be addressed. And then uh, put together their, um, their, their foot soldiers, their technical teams and whatever, to work within that framework and come up with a solution with a time frame they themselves will agree on. That way, we'll have a peaceful business environment for the businesses to operate. People will, have, will go to, the, uh, to work, and our country will continue to move forward. And as we said, we then continue to be the hope, not only for, for the region, but even for Africa. Our politics are actually hope for many countries in Africa. The way, the way we will see that we have this challenge, many countries look at us and say, wow, you can have elections, presidential elections are nullified and still continue as a country. Uh, that's a plus for us. We've come a long way. Uh, we have wins that we've made. We have had missteps also on the way, but we still have the opportunity to move this country forward and even address the issues we face. There is no issue that is in some, uh, some mountable. There is no issue that is impossible for us to address if we have the courage and the will to sit together and start looking at the issues and remove the personalization of them. Danvers, I know you don't represent the, the church here today in a, in a formal <laughs> setting. <laughs> so, yeah. We called you here as a commissioner with the NCIC. But uh, Dr. Komolo feels uh, if we needed a neutral arbiter in this matter, he would not be the first to call the church to, to, to wade in. I will differ on him on, on a few things, the first of which are factual. First of all, as a commission, we work closely with the Interreligious Council of Kenya, which is both Christians and Muslims and Hindus. And why I'm saying this is because he uh, actually had a sweeping statement. Uh, generally, the church is biased. And, and I think the Conference of Catholic Bishops will greatly, greatly uh, disagree with him. Um, because if you look at some of the mainstream churches, um, they've not really, they call both sides out when they're wrong. Okay, they were the first to say there's no more campaigning in our platform during the campaign season. They say no, 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 no. We don't care which side you belong to, but the the pulpit is the pulpit. If you want to say a few things, go outside there and, and speak. The Anglican Church, too. The Provost, I think, of, of the All Saints has been here, even on your studios, and he's been critical of but the government too and uh, the, the Azimio leaders. Um, having worked closely with them, I can tell you majority of the Chile mainstream churches, they're not really biased. Now, I understand, I understand where you're coming from, um, but they're really not. Now, let me say this way, you're not aware of Achille, but I can tell you also, this, towards the end of last week, actually a few weeks ago, and, and even towards the end of last week, there was an intensity in the background, in the behind the scenes uh, dialogue, and the, the church was beheading that, uh, Wahiga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the church leaders were critical uh, when I say there was a lot of um, dialogue happening this weekend, apart from the international community, even the church, the church leaders were involved. It's only that they can't come and you know, triumph what you've been saying, uh, because that's part of dipl shuttle diplomacy, behind the scenes negotiation. But they have been actually involved. So I'm not here to, to defend them. I'm just here to, to put clarity into the sweeping generalization my good Wakili has said. I can't no, 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 no. myself. It, it, it is not, it's, <laughs> yeah, you can't blame the entire church. No, no. Now, it, it, because also, I mean, you, I know what you're coming from, 
but it's not an accurate picture uh, of that because if, if, if they, they were not trusted, believe me, uh, the, the, the behind the scenes negotiations and dialogue will not have been uh, proceeded anywhere if they were not trusted. They are they, they aren't going on, and they have been arbitrary. They work. They work. I, I know what happened, and they, I know the perception. But they, they have worked closely and strongly with both sides, and to, to bring peace during the election, after election, and even now they are still involved. Why are we here then? So defend your your why, position. Why, why are we here then? If the church, political leadership, has been mediating, if our institutions like NCIC have been working because they are in charge of facilitating peace. If trade unions have been involved actively, why, why, why have we shut the country down today? That's enough to tell you that whatever mechanisms have been deployed so far are ineffective. I am not here to accuse or defend the church. I, I, I think the Kenyan public and the audience are smart enough to know position that different church leaders have taken in this country. What I am stating is that the church that we used to have, that will hold the government and opposition to account, that had a moral standing, to, to advocate for multi-party democracy and rule of law. It's long gone. It's long gone. It's obvious. I mean, to, we even reached a point where church leaders nowadays apply for state jobs. <laughs> My friend, <laughs> people are in this country, they can see these things. So no point... The institution the that he leads is, is no. led by a reverend. So I, you continue I know. to even the, I throw barbs at uh, Danvers <laughs> Makori, who himself is also a trained theologian. Yes. <laughs> even ESCC the other day, you, you, you saw the appointments. And I'm not here to accuse them. What's wrong with that? What I'm trying to say mm -hmm. is that Kenya is first losing that third, fourth moral force to help us talk when we start fighting like we are fighting now. And that's why we have to come here and call bluff of both Azimio and Kenya Kwanza and tell them, you owe us a duty to talk. We have to tell the president, you owe us a duty to talk to the opposition. We have to tell the opposition, you owe us a duty to remain vigilant and talk to the government. So, so if these talks are to happen from where you sit, because you've been very categorical on them from the very beginning, what are the fundamentals? What, 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 basis, yeah. so, what, what structure would these talks look like? So clear. We've had political talks here before. They have to be structured and focused on specific issues. There are specific governance issues. One of them is this IBC thing. That are they agreed on by both sides or it's only one side? They don't side? have to agree. They are, the president and Mr. Dinka don't have to agree. It is in the interest of the country that we have IBC reform. We have systems in elections. And I, I've said here uh, on your show, Waihiga, that there are bigger countries that conduct elections that have 10 times voters, uh, uh, registered voters compared to Kenya and that do it within a week. You know results within 24 hours. This technology exists. It exists even here in Kenya. We just have bad manners. We don't want to follow it. You see? So we, they have to talk. We have to reform IBC. We have to reform the police force. And I've been a victim of police brutality in this country. I don't want to talk more about that here. As we have to make police force become professional, less corrupt. And I know what I'm talking about as a lawyer who practices daily. And we have to call political forces, particularly younger MPs, to order, to appreciate that there are sensitivities in this country that they cannot just keep abusing people. When you see former Chief Justice David Maraga moving around the country with a task force looking into police, welfare and other matters, don't you feel that will eventually contribute to the professionalism that you're crying for today? You know, or do respect, you want to see more? I, I respect Mr. Maraga a lot and several members of his team are also my friends or acquaintances. My worry is that they're going to recommend serious reform that there's no money to pay. For the simple reason that even today, tax generators is not there, people are not working. So you can talk of so many colorful reforms on paper, but if you don't tell people off and tell them, you know, you have to do things A, B, C, D in the right way, make institutions independent to work, then you're wasting time. So I'm not saying they should, police welfare should not be taken care of, but how will you fund it? And it is not the first task force anyway on, on public service reforms in, in Kenya. So, look, I don't know. I don't know how to put this. But these people, these two forces have to talk in the interest of the country. And they are, it has to be structured around reforms. And, of course, cost of living issues. We know mm. there are international dimensions. We know that. We, we, Kenya didn't create the war in Ukraine. <laughs> the geopolitical forces that are at play in Kenya are sometimes beyond us. But, and, and remember the former president had some subsidies. We can talk on subsidies. We can talk on social welfare reforms. And we want to come back to your show now to hold the government accountable on its manifesto. Because I have so many things in, in uh, Kenya Kwanza manifesto that I also want us to talk about. But let's start with first things first. Azimio, Kenya Kwanza must have structured dialogue 
and it is in their interest to start it this week. If we wait for another demonstration and it picks up in Mombasa, in Kisumu and other parts of the country, and you know Nairobi is kind of the artery serving uh, all other parts of the country, then within two months, I think the dollar will be 200. <laughs> you know, <laughs> employers and importers know. The consequences are so grave. So, I mean, I think we, we've reached a point in this country where we have to call off the, call off the president's bluff, call Mr. Dickens' bluff and tell them, you have to talk. We love you, yes, but we cannot be the perpetual uh, fighting mode, knowing very well that a winner takes all approach in Kenya. We want to work. Mm. How many times have we debated this? You cannot have a, a, a country where this, a, a, a significant section feel left out. And people look at inclusion in this country based on positions in the executive. So since you can't change that mentality of looking at positions in the executive, why don't you reform it to create more positions? How, many, is, how many more? If you, if you can create 50 cars, what is so difficult about creating prime minister? What is so difficult about creating deputies? Yet you can create 50 so-called cars. And you know it's unconstitutional. And that will solve the challenges that bedevil this country. It will f first engender no. inclusion. Perception is very important. Mm -hmm. It will create room for people to believe that they are being included. Then we can talk about further devolution, strengthening other layers of government, making NCIC work. At the moment, they just go to hotspots and produce reports. <laughs> Nothing very special. You continue to throw shots at Danvers. I don't I, 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 I have the right to reply. I didn't even know that Danvers is a commission. I have just done today, and I have nothing personal about Danvers. I'm criticizing institutions that we created. Okay. Let, let me allow Stephen to say something before Danvers. There is a master's reply. fundamental uh, problem that we are facing as a country. That um, uh, in this conversation, it comes to, to the surface. And um, uh, of course, we have a situation which we, we have to react to and we have to address. But then we have a fundamental problem of lack of our value system that guides and gives us the principle of how we make decisions, how we uh, address issues, how, if there are issues, how we go about them. And until we start looking at our value system that is going to guide us and how we engage in different situations, um, the, the, what we are seeing today, whether the challenge with the IBC, challenge with the cost of living, uh, the elections, and all these challenges we have, today is not going to be the last time or this year, the last time we are going to face them. Many years to come will continue to experience different challenges in different forms. But we need to have a value system that guides on how we address these issues. And that's what we're saying. For, for us, where we sit uh, at, uh, the, in the labor sector, one of our values is social dialogue. That no matter what is happening... I, I apologize for interrupting you. Just hold on on that thought on the labor sector. Let's listen in. Mr. Sisi Tunasimama na Mungu ya wa Kenya. Nasema wa Kenya mnataka ukweli. Wa Kenya mnataka haki. Wa Kenya wanataka chakula. Wa Kenya wanataka maji. Wanataka elimu. Wanataka matibabu. Wanataka kazi. Si wao wanataka. Tunataka Tulikuwa nataka maandamano ya amani. Jamaa mleta silaha. Mleta tear gas. Mleta risasi. Lakini mambo bado. Mambo bado. Hakuna mtu anapokunambulio. Hakuna mtu. Kionjo sio. Sileo ni kionjo. Sileo ni kionjo. Wale mbao wako hapa wako zikia Hapo nyuma Tuku na mama mate ya wangani karua Tuku na mashimiwa Steven Kalonza Musioka 
Mheshimiwa Eugene Wamalwa Mheshimiwa Jeremia Kioni Mheshimiwa Lushiri Wajakoya Mheshimiwa Mheshimiwa James Orengo Mheshimiwa Gladys Wanga Mheshimiwa Lilian Gogo Mheshimiwa Babu Owino Mheshimiwa Salasia Mheshimiwa Rosa Buyu TJ Kajuan Tundia Molo Teddy Mwambire Mheshimiwa Godfrey Osopsi Mheshimiwa Oron kutoka Kisumu Mheshimiwa All right, so the situation now in Madare, the convoy, Azimio convoy at a standstill. Um, various leaders there acknowledging uh, the greetings of their supporters. Uh, we've had a few words there from Azmio leader Raila Odinga stating that, uh, you know, some of the, you know, in, in, in the characteristic manner in which he has been making these addresses, stating that the movement is unstoppable, the cost of living must come down, uh, electoral justice must, injustices must be addressed, and also acknowledging the presence of various leaders that are gathered here as part of this motorcade uh, today. Uh, earlier on, we had also continued to show pictures from Isili where other supporters of uh, Azimio had tried to join join this motorcade but were being prevented by the police from joining and so there was uh, there was some sort of uh, altercation between the authorities there and the protesters but that was earlier on right now all focus here on madare uh, where this uh, motorcade continues on its way uh, of course many questioning whether section 3 of the public order act will come into effect at 6 p.m., which stipulates that public protests like this one can only happen between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., which is now 5.30 p.m., meaning that as per the law, there would be another 30 minutes or so uh, remaining for this protest to continue before those who are involved uh, would have to disperse until tomorrow, if they so wish, or, and if they had also applied for another protest. Of course, we know earlier on, Raila Odinga had stated that this protest will happen every Monday, moving forward, until their demands are met. And uh, uh, right now, uh, what I can also confirm is there is a tweet that has been posted on the official page of President William Ruto, and this uh, tweet uh, states, and I quote, we acknowledge the supremacy of the Constitution and submit to the letter of the law. Nothing extra legal will be part of what we do as a nation. This is posted on the official handle of President William Ruto. Uh, this uh, posted with pictures of the swearing in of the new Solicitor General, Shadrach Mose. He stated, the President stated, and I quote, we acknowledge the supremacy of the Constitution and submit to the letter of the law. Nothing extra legal will be part of what we do as a nation. Uh, Danvers, I'm sure you'll want to say something about that, but uh, I believe uh, we were just hearing from Stephen Obiro briefly on uh, trade unions and what more they can do to intervene in a situation like this. Yes. Um, one, the, from what we've learned as, a, as trade unions and uh, as the Employers' Federation is that even when you disagree, even when you don't have a solution to the challenge that is facing you, you have an obligation to sit down and agree on a framework on how you two you are going to search for that solution that you all seek and come up with a win-win solution that is going to be uh, acceptable 
to the all parties that are, uh, are involved. And that is very important for us as a, as a country. Now, we as a country, we need to have value, a value system that we, um, that we uphold that is going to guide us on how we move uh, and how we deal with the challenges. All the challenges that we are going to face today or even in the future, we don't know them. Some of them will, will come with a, with a big magnitude, some of them will surprise us. But if we have a value system that allows us, gives us the principle on how we are going to deal with the challenges, whether you are uh, in the opposition or whether you are in government, then we are going to, have to be able to move the country forward and uh, we are going to deal with all these issues. And that's what we, the Federation of Kenya Employers, stands for. And that's why we are calling and, and asking that it's important for the leaders to be courageous enough to sit and face one another and uh, not assume that there are no challenges. There are challenges. We know the, the, the business uh, community and the businesses need to operate and we need to operate in an environment that supports our, our activities. Uh, we have employees that uh, need to to move from one point to another so that they can access their places of work. Uh, we need uh, them to, to move in secure corridors. We don't need them to be exposed uh, to a lot of risks. And we have national issues that needs to be solved. So let's work on a framework and the leaders need to have that courage to address those issues. Thank you. Uh, Danvers, you've seen that tweet there on the official account of the president. And just for uh, uh, avoidance of doubt, I can read it one more time just in case you did not catch that. It was posted um, one hour ago with pictures of the uh, swearing in of the Solicitor General, Shadrach uh, Mose. He states, and I quote, we acknowledge the supremacy of the Constitution, submit to the letter of the law. Nothing extra legal will be part of what we do as a nation. I got the president actually is absolutely right. That's what I've been saying here. There has to be some fundamentals of when it comes even to dialogue. There has to be what is the ground rules, what is fact. And actually is very right. And why I'm saying that is because, and, and, and I think where it's coming from, if you're a historian, if you're, you're a military historian, uh, where you got every general who has picked uh, the theater of war or the field actually wins. And what are you saying? He's not negotiate. He's not going to engage at this level. Basically, he's saying, listen, we have a constitution. We have a law. Let's engage on that place, from that place. And it's so important. Where you depart, where you is so critical. I know I was saying that. Because if, if he comes to this level, he can't he can, he can win in this level. You see, if the president comes to this level and negotiates at this place, at this level, I mean, he's lost it. He's the head of the state. So he's right. He said, listen, if you want to negotiate, if you want anything, there we have rules, regulations, the constitution. Let's not forget that. He's a president, and he has to negotiate from that from the perspective. He, if he comes to this level, I, I, I guarantee he's lost. So, so what does the future look like when two hours ago, as new leader, Ilo Odinga states, we will have protests every Monday, and then an hour later, the president states, nothing extra legal will be part of what we do as a nation. Are you telling us, Danvers, that if we were to read those two statements correctly, we may have some very difficult Mondays moving no, forward? No, actually, no, actually, it's the opposite. I see the opposite. Uh, why? Because if you, he's not saying he's not going to talk. He's just saying, listen, let's <laughs> just follow the law. If we talk as, as per the law. Yeah, come on. You know, you, you cannot, it's if you did blackmail somebody you talk to, you, I cannot negotiate on, with, with a gun on my, on my head, Wahiga. So he's saying, listen, guys, actually, if you, what he's saying, like, listen, I'm willing, but it has to be the right way, the right way, and, and the right place. Let, let me finish by saying this, um, and, 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 and why, where is he's coming from? You see? We have to be very careful. I know what Achilles say, but we have to be very careful not, not to um, change laws on ex political expediency. Because this president in Bombers a while back, if you remember, you remember that clip? He was talking about if the, if the, if the shoe fits and, and it turns the other way, you will be able to suffer. And he was against the reforms then, which were, which were, uh, which will have given him more power, so to speak. So we have to be careful not to change laws for political expediency. We change laws, uh, or strategically speaking, because they need to, not because somebody wants them to, uh, so to speak. Okay, uh, I can actually refer you to the tweet first, in case you missed it, uh, or if I, you, you know, we acknowledge the supremacy of the Constitution, submit to the letter of the law, nothing extra legal will be part of what we do as a nation. You can jump in, Dr. Kamolo.
to me, to me the, the two sides are still talking at each other, as opposed to talking to each other. They're still, they're, they're still not in the mood to have dialogue. And here we are being told that there's some shuttle diplomacy. Nobody wants to do anything extra legal. Demonstration is not extra legal. The president also has a right to, to work in office because he was sworn in. Nobody wants to remove him from office. But we are in a situation where there's, we are first going into a kind of a stalemate. So they have to talk. And how do they talk? They have to create those structures. I said here that law exists to serve man, not man to serve law. So anything you view extra legal <laughs> can actually be legalized if it works for Kenya. That's why we amended the constitution anyway. We first amended, amended, and then overhauled it because it wasn't working for us. Including the law you are talking about of 5... 6 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. You can easily... Dr. Komolo, don't we then set up a pattern where every runners-up in an election, depending on their capacity, will then force the winner to a discussion table uh, within the law. Of course, nothing that they're doing is illegal. Not, not and, and so it's, it's very hard then for a regime to settle in and, and govern without having to first deal with, you know, you have to walk and chew gum. Walk, think, uh, govern, chew gum, deal with the opposition and do uh, a... Well, that's part of maturing democracy. I think an agreement not, with it them. is not necessarily the case that losers or perceived losers will always demand. Uh, but we are in a stage where our institutions are not mature enough to mediate a peaceful democratic election, one that is perceived to be free and fair. Remember the president holds the position that he won, that is his right. Remember Azimio holds the position that they were uh, uh, rigged out, opened the server and all that. That means the systems are not working. Because all that IBC needs to tell us is that we did the selection in this manner, these are the results, this is the server. I, I, I Listen to me first. Um, uh, it, it, in Brazil the other day, uh, Bolsonaro alleged that he was rigged out. The equivalent of their IBC, uh, under the contractor they had, they, had, they had contracted to help them, including by there in the US, opened what they call the servers, went to court, and these people were actually fined for defaming the equivalent of the IBC. This has happened in the US the other day. Our IBC tells us, okay, uh, there are intellectual property issues here we can't open. Or oh, it is in the Netherlands we can't open and we are paying them. Don't you see, don't you see that as mediocrity? Do, didn't they say this time that they did open the they, servers? They, they said they cannot open, and this was in the Supreme Court, because there are intellectual property issues. So they will give what is called read only access. Any IT expert you talk to will tell you that's a very deceptive way to, 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 to try to be transparent for a public body. So, and I agree with my friend here from FKE, we, we have value systems for sure, but we've accepted mediocrity in this country for too long. And we need to call these institutions to bluff, uh, their bluff, and it's very important that we hold them to account. And, and I keep saying this, the president needs to be a gentleman. He needs to have a conversation. He won't be able to run this country if the opposition uh, continues the way they do. You may want to say extra legal, but this, this, today is a public holiday, and it was not accepted. That's enough to tell you these people have support. Mm. Yeah. So you may want to say, okay, I'm in office legally and whatever, but the countries are still made. So, so what do you do? Uh, do you want to be a president who uh, supervises Mandamano Kilasik? <laughs> do do well, uh, uh, Let me also do, do some very important comparison. I was in South Korea, South Korea the other day, and I know Malema is more combative than Azimio people. They're demonstrating today. Police are facilitating them. Images from Nigeria, bigger man than this, no violence. Police are facilitating them. The same happening in Tunisia. And I think even the French people are going to the most later in the evening. They have staggered there in a manner that the society still works. What is so special about Kenya that we cannot have a structured dialogue around how protests are happening so that we don't close the country on a Monday? And then leaders still chest thump, telling us, oh, we're extra legal, or oh, we have the right to band and things like that. I mean, who, who are they serving? They should be serving us, not the other way around. So they must listen. And somebody has just indicated to me that uh, uh, Governor Sakaja is one of the sober people in that team. You can see how he has managed to bring the team in Nairobi, including embracing the opposition, because he understands you can't govern Nairobi through just stamping that you won elections. <laughs> Nairobi is a crucible, it represents Kenya. 
So if Governor Sakaja is smart enough and has been able, I know he's under attack from his party, but he's been able to bring a team and they're working together, including with ODM uh, officials, including Rosemary Karuki and all that. What is so difficult in the national leaders coming together and agreeing on some package of reforms? Then the president governs in peace. Or president Uru did a lot to Ahiga towards the end of his term because he understood the value of consultations and he was able to do a lot of infrastructure projects. Right now, my friend uh, Onesmas Murukomen has not even commissioned one road six months later. Because, first, the approach to geopolitics is wrong. You, you, I can, we can discuss that on a, another day. Two, because he won't even have money to pay contractors because people are demonstrating. So you're going to have a very brilliant man after five years has done nothing in the roads ministry. He says he picked up a ministry with so many pending bills. He's not the, that's not the only ministry with pending bills. Those are one of the concerns that he has, not, not the ones you have stated. No, but remember, that is why you need smart people in government. There are very many ways of funding infrastructure projects. I personally teach public-private partnerships, so I know there are many people willing to bring in money through a structured and transparent way, and where they are guaranteed of their returns, to, to, to help us build infrastructure in this country and many other regional infrastructure projects. So it's not entirely about tax, but you need tax to guarantee some things. Let me allow Danvers. These smart people in government, man. <laughs> Let me allow Danvers to, to respond. Yet, wanted to. And Steve, I can. I still see you there. I'll come to you shortly. You know, I think Wakili, and and I'm glad he brought it out himself. And that's why I need to respond and and understand the concerns. But just recently, and you can see it playing out very well in Fox News and also in the US. Donald Trump, January 6th, led a mob and incited them to an insurrection and they stormed the Capitol on claims that the election was stolen. Vega, it is actually coming very clear. He knew it was not, but he was using that. Fox News anchors, the mouthpiece of the, the GOP was very clear. They knew it in, in, in the position that you've seen clearly. They knew they, it is not true. They actually they knew that's preposterous. He cannot even come close to. But guess what? Guess what happened? They, they knew what they are saying is not true, but they kept on saying it until people believed it. So just because you claim something, even the, the Brazilian case, just because you claim something that does not mean it's true. Well, Higa, I'm going to say this for the nth time. We've gone through the process. The, the Supreme Court examined every accusation that came through, and they even that server was open. And we're here, and they ruled after examining everything. The majority who overthrew the last election, majority were still in, in, in the seat. They actually did overthrow the last election, say, all well, this time, actually, it is fine. So we just get, whether you, whether you voted for them or not, just agree to, to, to that fact. So that's why I was saying, we, 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 we just can't cherry pick what you want and what you don't want. The same way he's saying that people should put country first, I think on both sides, you put country first. Um, at the end of the day, we will have, I think, a, a better outcome of results that, that we see, but, but, but we have to respect the rule of law, what is, what is currently now and what is true, and then negotiate from that. You cannot just dismiss certain facts, hoping uh, to, 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 to cajole or, or, or to set emotion. Just accept that this is a fact and address issues that can be addressed. Thank you. And just to let our viewers know that one, uh, you know, back in uh, September 2022, I believe that was uh, Smartmatic, the supplier of voting technology to the elections agency, did decline to open the national NTC servers, citing security issues. Uh, Danvers, just to state that to you. Uh, what we've seen now is an attempt by the Azimio Motorcade, I think it was to join Thika Road, yeah, to... I believe. Yes, just adjacent to uh, one of the government training institutions. But uh, the tear gas has been lobbed towards the front. And so I think uh, there is an attempt to block the motorcade from accessing Thicker Road. Uh, and so right now it's an uncertain moment. Uh, you can see, uh, th you know, there's a bit of jitteriness amongst the supporters. They're not sure now if they'll be able to move forward or if they'll be repulsed back into Madare, uh, where they've been for the better part of the last 30, 40 minutes or so after coming from Isi Lee. Uh, within Madare, uh, the Azimio leaders addressed and had, had a short, uh, short, short session of public address, uh, ad, uh, addresses. But right now you can see supporters running back, away from the tear gas, uh, back towards Madare, or basically fleeing from the, the pungent smell of the tear gas and, the, of course, the effect that it has on you. Uh, the motorcade is still somehow moving forward. Um, but let's get more now from our, our Chemutai Goin, who is uh, with, who's, uh, closely following this on location. And yes, we can see more tear gas has actually been lobbed. This is uh, changing as we speak. Chemutai, I trust you can hear me. 
Uh, okay, tell us what the intention is if you have a sense of that and uh, what you're seeing from where you are. Um, Wahika, we were just uh, getting through that route of the Kenya School of Monetary Studies onto Thika Road. And um, previously, before that, there were two rival groups that had uh, clashed and um, there were a lot of storms that were pelted. So I'm um, coming into Thika Road, uh, the police are dispersing the crowd because um, there were quite a number that had gathered. But um, they've dispersed, but the crowd is uh, remaining adamant actually and just walking by the side, by the side of the road and appearing to, to escort the convoy uh, once again. So um, there's a lot of still tear gas just along along the way, the whole, the whole way through. Um, but now um, the convoy is now on Thika Road. We still don't know whether the plan is for them to head to town or... Um, <laughs> and for or for them to head towards um, any other place. And uh, Wahiga, you had spoken about the fact that the public or the act requires that any gathering end by 6 p.m. And uh, it's literally maybe about 12 minutes or so, about 22 minutes or so to it. So we should we want to see what the entire plan is. But we are not uh, departing from the convoy, just trying to ensure that we can give uh, as much coverage as we can to, to know what the next course of action is. But like you said, from all the speeches that have been made by as new leader Raila Odinga and even by um, the fellow leaders within the Azimio family, is that um, this will be a Monday thing, that until the, their demands are met, that uh, what they what what they have been talking about in all their meetings uh, are addressed, then this will be the, the new norm, awaiting to see, of course, what then would be the reaction from the other side of the government. Temutai, the motorcade now joined the Thika Road uh, Highway. From here, it's, uh, they'll be getting to Pangani, uh, and then a couple of options there. Is that is that a way to get into the CBD? Will they get to Ayakiwe and, and move in another direction if they're not allowed to access the CBD? as would be a repeat of what we saw earlier when there was a police truck uh, blocking the road there just outside Serena. Uh, I think we may now know the true intentions of the uh, convoy here in terms of the, the thinkers behind, you know, sort of where all this would end uh, yes. shortly. Um, I think, Wahida, you're right. Um, once we head towards uh, Pangani, or if that's the route they will take, then we would be able to give further information because there are many options. They could go down to Globe Cinema. They don't know whether they could use Forest Road um, so that to also approach uh, Globe Cinema from from that bit. So uh, we are also looking forward to finding out whether that is the plan or actually uh, it marks the end of the day and whether the, the message is home for the people that um, as new leadership wanted uh, the message driven to. And, and Temutai, I know you're trying to gather as much information on the move. You still haven't gotten a sense of whether the protest would end at, at 6 p.m. as per Section 3 of the Public Order Act. You know, you're, you're also just like us waiting to see if, if that is the case. Um, yes, I think that's, what, that, that's, why we, that's what we'll be waiting to know because uh, I must say that uh, when we had that final stop at Madare, uh, you could realize that maybe police exercised some sort of restraint, mm -hmm. and uh, that is where the speeches that, uh, that were issued or given by the leadership took much longer as opposed to the others where it was literally touch and go. As soon as they start speaking and, uh, and one person has spoken, then tear gas is, is locked. But then also, there were also maybe some logistical challenges that uh, could have uh, been met on the police because uh, the route that we've gone through is very narrow uh, from the area of, uh, all through from its leaf cutting into Madare is very narrow. And at some point, you could see that uh, some of those uh, protesters uh, realized where the police were lobbing tear gas from and that is how they started pelting those particular areas with stones because they had been able to see that this is where those police officers are. So I think it was also strategic for the police to uh, maybe keep off that whole stretch of Madare because it is a very, very narrow route and uh, anything, anything could have happened. But uh, now we, we, I think there are smaller groups of gatherings in different areas we are trying to we are trying to see uh, where they are headed. Yeah.
<laughs> Temutai, if you can still hear me, has there been a, a, a sense in which uh, the messaging has changed from what was being said by Azimio leaders um, at Serena to what you are hearing at Isili and, and finally Madare? Has the message changed in any way or sort of is there been a consistency of, of the demands? No, 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 no. The, the list has actually not changed. Even prior before Serena, um, for the briefings that have been there, for the public, when, when they've been holding these constant public engagements in different parts of the country, um, the message that you've seen being read half the time by, by Azimio leader Raila Odinga on the resolutions of Azimio, uh, cutting across different, uh, the issue of, of course, cost of living, electoral justice, they want the process of reconstitution of IEBC stalled. Uh, they, they claim that uh, the, the new administration um, is, uh, is imposing an ethnic-driven public service. There's a whole chain of list of issues, the issue of jobs. There's a whole list of that that has been um, listed. And uh, even today, and especially in the last rally that we just had, um, that is what we also saw. It was, it was a, a, a summarized list of all the grievances that have been presented by Azimio over time. It's just uh, outside Serena, um, Raila Odinga was unable to prosecute uh, his, his speech because the police um, uh, lobbed tears. Chamotai, thank you so much. Um, I guess the moment of reckoning is, is near. Um, soon we'll, you know, we'll know if, if, if the motorcade will attempt to to enter the CBD as had been the original intention at about 2 p.m. Remember, earlier on we had been informed that a press briefing would take place by Azimio leaders at, at, at or outside the Serena Hotel and thereafter they would proceed to KICC for uh, a convergence by the leadership of Azimio, you know, others who had KICC waiting for them. Uh, remember the original brief from the Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, had been we meet or we start off from KICC at 6 a.m., but that has that changed within the course of, of the day. Um, uh, what we know is that there have been attempts for the motorcade to make its way to care, you know, to uh, the Nairobi CBD, but uh, the police always on, on standby to, uh, uh, you know, block. We know there had been a, even a, a police truck just outside Serena not allowing or, or, or blocking the way to the central business district. And if that will be the case right now, uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, um, with the leaders being very tight-lipped on their next movements, our teams trying to find out more about what the end game is here for the day, and uh, that information has not been a forthcoming. Pictures here, and we have uh, Stephen here with us. Uh, uh, Stephen Obiro, head of advocacy, consulting, and partnerships at FKE. It does look like a few people went to work. Uh, I've seen other vehicles now. Some of the other roads were quite deserted, but when you look at this, hopefully a little business went on in the city and in the county. Stephen? Um, yes, uh, there were a few people who managed to, to get. But uh, you need to look at the structure of our, of our economy. If you see at the road, uh, those are people who are driving uh, cars, mostly the private cars. Um, what does that tell you? Most of our employees are not people who commute using the private cars. And so that's why we are saying there needs to be a solution so that our, the workers can be able to move safely and even the traders uh, uh, can move safely from their uh, places of residency to the places of work and places where they do their business. That would be really good. And even if everything ends sort of today and, and, and there's no protest tomorrow or the days to come, what are the anticipated spillover effects of, into the rest of the week if you start your Monday with the kind of day we've had? Uh, definitely the, the plans for, man, for, for the week have been disrupted and so you have to go on the drawing board and come up with uh, new plans on how now your week is going to, to move. Uh, at the same uh, time you'll be trying to recover what is already lost uh, because there are, there are costs that are uh, uh, that 
of course you've incurred whether you close that business whether somebody was there or not the cost that you incurred uh, the salaries that you you you, are, you have to pay even for that day that you are, are not uh, producing and so it is very important that uh, we we have the the the, the, the government and uh, the the the, the leader of uh, Azmio agreeing on a framework that will ensure that we don't get uh, to there again. And not only just to react on what has happened, but even in the future, because challenges will continue to be there in this country. And we need to ensure that the few jobs that we have, if you look at the structure of employment in Kenya, only 16% of, uh, of our employment uh, or thereabout is in the formal sector, uh, are people who, have, who are employed on the uh, formal uh, modern wages. We need to protect the few that we have so that then we do not exacerbate the situation, the challenge that we have of unemployment. A business that loses it is, uh, it is operations or it is productive capacity for one day, the, the impact of that can cripple that business. Mm. Because if you are a business that you are running on, a, on, a, on, on credit and you have a, a loan to pay and you have these other costs to meet, any disruptions can cripple that business and make it not to, to return to work. Let's, an example is some of the, of the business might be restaurants uh, in, in, in downtown and uh, those restaurants had supplies and perhaps those uh, supplies have gone, they, they have uh, been wasted. Uh, what happens they, they is actually a capital being lost. Uh, and it's very important that uh, we don't allow this situation to continue for long. And that's why a framework, they might not have the solutions to all the challenges, mm. but let them work out on a framework on how they are going to solve okay. the issues. I'm told we're due for a break soon, so let me get some final thoughts uh, from each of my guests. Uh, Dr. Komola, I'll start with you uh, on your parting shot, and please make it a brief one. The question has always come up of how to comprehensively separate our business environment from our political environment. So as the political class continues to uh, test our democracy, our business community thrives and grows. Uh, wishful thinking or some other countries have seemingly found a way to... <laughs> Total wishful thinking. Uh, business is directly linked to politics. Businesses invest based on policy priorities of the government. So you know predictability, you know certainty of what the government wants to do. And, and areas where public money is likely to be pumped into. Businesses thrive on infrastructure. Infrastructure is developed uh, by government. So there's an inherent connection between public and private sector. <clears throat> so, so it's very important. And by the way, there's no country that has separated them. Uh, literally, every country, uh, businesses follow uh, public priorities. OK. So, so um, And your parting I, shot. I think as my parting shot, I just want to plead to the very few for, uh, voices of reason in both Azimio and uh, Kenya Kwanza um, and ask them to deliberately reach out to the president and tell him he is the president. It's so important that he engages. So important. Okay. And that he does it as soon as possible. So my friends in government, voices of reason, please talk to the president. No need for just thumping. Engage the opposition. And, and we are here to help also in, in, uh, in uh, proposing legal reforms that can stabilize the country going forward. Okay. We know them. Thank you. Dan, was your a parting shot, a brief one? Um, the history of our country has shown that no matter what we face as a country, at the end of the day, we must dialogue. Um, from the can do, can we era, they dialogued. Um, Moi era, they dialogued, and, and even now. So to me, it's important. And there has been initiations in the past for, for dialogue. I pray that uh, sane voices will pre pre prevail and put the country first, and then peace will prevail. Uh, not to forget that we've had, the, the past few weeks, there have been what, they had peaceful rallies, so to speak. Uh, so today we've seen the chaos that have ensued. So my, for the sake of our country and for the sake of our citizens, I pray that dialogue will prevail and, and, and sane voices will prevail uh, that way as we can set the country in a path of prosperity and peace for the future of our country. Thank you. I think that's a good place to leave it. And uh, Dr. Komolo doesn't want to respond to that. So we'll... No, I'm not going to That's respond. a good place to be. And Stephen, I think I also gave you a, a good chance for a final word. We've had Dr. Eric Komolo. He's an advocate of the High Court. Thank you for joining us. Stephen Obiro, Head of Advocacy, Consulting and Partnerships at the Federation of Kenya Employers, Asante Sana. And Danvas Makori, a commissioner at the National Cohesion and Integration Commission as well. Thank you so much for your time. Gentlemen, thank you for everyone who's tuned in. Uh, we now take a break.
break. I take you back to some of our regular programming. And of course, Citizen Nipache at 7 p.m. will have many more updates for you. Our teams continue to follow the situation on the ground. And should there be breaking news, we will bring that to you and also continue to update you on our digital platforms as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. We'll see you soon. Goodbye for now. At this point, I think the best thing to do would be to report the matters to the authorities. Dio, if anything happens to my so-called mother... Something bad like what? When it comes to pain, we only seem to talk about two sides. The pain you feel and the relief once it's gone. But what about the moment in between when you're finally released from pain? That moment when you start to get back to ordinary and ordinary feels amazing. Whatever pain you're going through, release starts here. When trying to determine if a diaper fits well, check the size ranges on the box. Red marks on legs and a soaking diaper are signs of a too small diaper. New Soft Hair Space Series is rooted from space technology. Keeps you dry and comfortable for 12 hours long. Soft Care. Protect your leap. <sighs> walk, walk, walk. What's over? Busy biters, get down to snack business. When snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. In 2001, Castrol and Jaguar Land Rover become iconic partners. Castrol is more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. You know how money works and how you would want it to work for you without compromising on your principles. The KCB Sal Bank is built on values that you believe in, where trust is your biggest asset. Investing in accountability and transparency is key to your growth. We understand that you want your investments to go further and do more because your values come first. Join us today at your nearest KCB branch. KCB Sahal Bank. Banking on your values. My name is Angela. And I'm the first Kenyan to win a Wimbledon Grand Slam. My sister Rosie and I are tennis players. But to Metoka Mbali, we were often to Kiwawa Dogo. And our life became such a struggle. To forget our challenges, our uncle took us to the tennis court. Hapo, all our worries went away. The sport became our inspiration, our escape, and we were determined to keep practicing and pushing our game. Until one day, we made it to the top of international tennis. Come as Sisi Tuliweza, there is no reason you can't do. Against all odds, Angela and Rosie found a way to bring their dreams to life and became international tennis stars. We believe you can also do the impossible. That's what we call Africanacity. Whatever your goals, join ABSA today and together we can get things done. So 
kalamu na banya bila mnataka pia wewe ufanye yako kwa sababu wewe wakati unamwangalia yake mm. yako nene anafanya anything happens to my so called mother something bad like what more fix dryness it's what all mothers dream of come on mothers try more fix baby diapers and be part of our happiness movement And do you have any question for us? How do you see? Do say it again and again. Nico fitti maze maze nico fitti nico fitti maje man ma benti wa ko fitti. Cheers for cheers for cheers. Just juicy. This rich in vitality boosting vitamins that put back what life takes out. Just choose it up. Hi. <laughs> just choose it up. Just choose it up. Young lady, you're taking too long. Two more minutes, ntazima stima. Two minutes, sawa mom. Sawa sawa. Ji express the sour sour. Enjoy the new sour red with the brilliant fragrance of strawberry. Sour leaves you feeling fresh for longer. Ji express the sour sour. Lady On my dark marks I've tried everything but hardly any results. Nivea Luna 630 works from day 1 with visible results in just 2 weeks. You'll see the difference or get your money back. The results speak for themselves. Join the 1 million women already using the number 1 Luna 630 from Nivea. <sighs> walk walk walk. Over busy biters get down to snack business when snacking is under attack we'll be there to fight back It really goes deep inside the tooth and repairs tooth sensitivity. I will be able to go back to the things that I enjoy eating the most. The new Sensodyne Repair and Protect with Deep Repair. Toko no toko no tokuma Left it in the 